The most essential data role a company can have is the data analyst. All the work put in to collect, ingest, clean, model, and train data is useless if there's no one to make sure the insights are found and acted on. And that's what the data analyst is primarily responsible for, potentially along with everything else. The best part is if you have some latent ability to look over data and figure out what's going on, you're in an excellent spot to jump into this ever-growing career with few other technical skills. The average data analyst salary in the United States is 80,000 US dollars currently, with a typical range between 70 and 89,000. Across the board, data analysts are projected for above average growth for the next 10 years, with certain specialties like market research analysts projected for up to 22% growth. That means this is one of the fastest growing, well-paying and accessible careers people can get into, with even more growth potential into other areas of data and analytics. At its core, the data analyst is responsible for interpreting a set of data to answer a question or solve a problem. Easy enough, right? The challenge comes with the need for quality data to analyze. This could potentially include a lot of steps, such as sourcing, talking to people to find the data they use, or collecting and building data sets themselves, cleaning, like removing duplicates, dealing with missing values or outliers, modeling, like combining numerous data sets, adding or removing columns, interpreting, finding the patterns and trends, and presenting, communicating the findings to the right people in a way they understand. This could be visuals, written reports, presentations, or just having a conversation. For example, a data analyst may need to hunt down some data from the marketing team, find the Excel sheets they use for each of their marketing initiatives, collect all of that, put it into a database, clean up some of the bad data, and there will be bad data, and now they can actually do the analysis. Maybe answer questions for return on investment for each marketing strategy, then put their findings into a report, present it to the marketing team, and help them direct where they would fund their future efforts. Now, if you're familiar with data architecture for analytics, you might be familiar with those steps. If you were to scale up this whole process, once data is identified, data engineers create pipelines to collect that data and load it into a data lake. Business intelligence engineers and developers do data modeling and put it into a data warehouse and prepare the data for report consumption. And then analysts or developers build dashboards for presentations. So depending on the size of an organization and the maturity of its analytics group, a data analyst may be working alongside a full engineering team or they may be doing all those steps themselves. So that's a lot to know, and you might be wondering what sort of technical skills you need to back that up. The good news is the essentials you need to get started aren't too bad. Most analysts are skilled with Excel or Google Sheets. The reality is even in companies with strong analytics, Excel is everywhere. I've worked at banks that did critical accounting in Excel, I've worked at techie startups that track millions of dollars in Excel, and I've worked at some of the biggest tech companies that still use Excel to track deliverable dates. Next would probably be a visualization tool, either a tool like Tableau or Power BI, or a language like R or Python. You can probably get by with either strategy to start, depending on your affinity for code, but in the long run, most analysts will want to pick up multiple options to be the most marketable. SQL will become essential if you start working with relational databases as your primary data source, Less critical if you're working off Excel, flat files, NoSQL databases, or data lakes. There are a ton of other analytics tools, platforms, and languages you can apply, but knowing these will get you a solid foundation. It can also be a good approach to focus into a specific in-demand form of analysis, such as Google Analytics or Google Ads, or even YouTube, such as how useful likes are to a channel. Finally, having a solid grasp of statistics and math can be critical for analysis of most data sets. This doesn't necessarily mean a PhD in math theory, but more of the competence in practical application of statistics. The non-technical skills are really what boosts an analyst's career, such as visualization, not just throwing numbers onto a blank sheet, but knowing how to best present information with specific charts and graphs to tell a compelling and convincing data story. If the data isn't understood by the next decision maker, all that work goes nowhere. That aligns with the next skill, which is communication. Not only do you have to get your ideas across to decision makers, you also have to communicate a lot to find sources of data and understand the questions people are asking. Often people don't know how to accurately ask for what they need, and it can take some finesse to fully understand the problem. So if you're picturing an analyst sitting isolated and just smashing away at a keyboard, that's probably not the most accurate for most experiences. And finally, we have industry or domain knowledge. Knowing about the business is often the most important part. If you're brand new, learn as much as you can, as quickly as you can, and that will go a long way. But often this is why data analysts get started internally. If you understand the main problems and areas of concern a business has, and you have enthusiasm for the skills above, 
there's a clear path for becoming a data analyst. The best part is that analysts work across all industries, such as finance, science, medicine, government, business, industry, and anything else you can think of, which is great because that means many people already have domain expertise and an area they could apply analysis to. All they have to do is start analyzing the data and showing the results to decision makers. And to do that effectively, you need to be good at telling a data story that can convince people. To help you with that, be sure to watch this video next.